पीवी कुरियन डाइड इन द ईयर 1993 14 जुलाई एंड वी हैज कंडक्टेड मेमोरी लेक्चर पीवी कुरियन मेमोरी लेक्चर एवरी ईयर पर दिस ईयर ऑन हिस डेट एनिवर्सरी शेयर जर्नलिस्ट एंड वो ऑल्सो एल लोगेट who had a close relations with uh, Lohia and JP, Madanal Hind. He will deliver the lecture of, memorial lecture of P. Quirion on the Dr. Lohia's Chinese policy, Chinese policy and the present situation. So kindly, uh, Madanal Hind, uh, Madanal Ji, please uh, start your uh, speech. He was working with the uh, Hindustan Times. And first of all, I would like to pay my tribute to my comrade P.V. Korean, who I am told was a great socialist and he wrote a book on Dr. Lohia. For, I mean, the book was, there were more than a thousand pages. It must be a great book. Unfortunately, I don't know Malayalam, so I cannot read it, but I've heard much about this book. So first of all, I pay my tribute to Mr. Korean. As for uh, China, I, I would like to start with a comment by Dr. Loya in one of his books and his speeches. Dr. Loya says that uh, when China was invading Tibet, Sri Dalai Lama wrote four letters to diff different people. One letter was addressed to the United States of America. The other letter was, uh, second letter was addressed to India's Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Third letter was addressed to UNO. And the fourth letter was addressed to Britain. And you would be surprised to know the reply of these four recipients of the letter. United States of America, I was surprised to hear this. They wrote to Dalai Lama, Oh, you are too far from us, so we are not much interested in it. I cannot understand how a great country like United States talk like that. But then at that time, perhaps US was not such a great power. Maybe, I don't know. Then Nehru replied, well, it is you, between you and China, you handle it. I have nothing to do with it. Third, you know, also didn't so much interest. What I'm saying, how we miss the opportunity. Such opportunities don't come all the time, especially when we deal with people like China. They are about China. Dr. Loja used to say, it is a rakshas. It is a rakshas, it is a monster. And I remember, I was, uh, I was, those days I was a student at Patna University and I heard a speech by Dr. Loja in 1962 when China has attacked Tibet and he said it is a shishu hatya, infantile uh, killing of an in, in, in ch a child, a, a shishu. And Tibet was just a shishu at that time. And China didn't do it all at, at once. China had been building roads. China had been entering step by step. And Lohia warned the country warned the Prime Minister, warned the government, do something about it. They are going to capture Tibet, but Indian government didn't do anything. Not only this, recently, let me tell you, I read the autobiography of the Nepal Prime Minister, Mr. B.P. Poirala. I got the book from, from Teen Murthy Library. It's a great book, and he was a great leader. You must know about it. He says that uh, he asked Nehru, Bibi Koirala, Bibi Koirala, Mr. Sarkasar Koirala, he was a socialist and he became the Prime Minister of Nepal and uh, he went to Nehru and he said, to him, why didn't you do something about Tibet? He didn't do. And do you know what Nehru said? Should I send the army to vacate Chinese from Tibet? No Prime Minister, no great leader would talk like that. Look at China today, what is happening? They say Arunachal Pradesh is a part of China. Arunachal Pradesh is a part of 
ठीक है देखो अरुणाचल प्रदेश बट एवरी डे दे आर सर्व दे आर राइट ओवर अवर अरुणाचल प्रदेश माई पॉइंट इज दैट ए ग्रेट कंट्री मस्ट केयर फॉर इट बॉर्डर दैट इज द फर्स्ट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एनी गवर्नमेंट अफकोर्स टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द पीपल टेकिंग केयर ऑफ देयर नीड्स एक्सेप्टेंस द इंपॉर्टेंट बट फर्स्ट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू सिक्योर द बॉर्डर ऑफ द कंट्री एंड आवर गवर्नमेंट फेल टू सिक्योर द बॉर्डर ऑफ द कंट्री लुक एट चाइना वॉट दे डेट दे आर सिक्योर ऑन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द फ्रेंड्स आई एम टोल्ड दैट आई शुड टॉक अबाउट टूडे चाइना ऑल्सो एंड वी कैन नॉट टॉक अबाउट टूडे चाइना अनलेस वी नो अबाउट येस्टरडे चाइना हाउ चाइना बिकेम वट इट इज टूडे वाई एंड वाई वी लैक बिहाइंड चाइना ऑलमोस्ट एवरी प्लेस whether it is arms and ammunition it is education it is foreign policy china is everywhere in nepal look what they are doing today only only is uh, the nepal prime minister only is criticizing india every day every day but we are keeping mum our prime minister is keeping quiet they are not doing anything they are not saying anything i don't know whether they are afraid of china people say they are afraid of china that's why prime minister modi is not doing anything he keeps quiet they are captain of the land even today so my point is that uh, when uh, when uh, the first point is that we must what china did why china is scorned over us They are only superpower after America. China is the only superpower today. Why is it so? We are nowhere near them. The first thing China did is to take care of the poorest of the poor. Even if whenever there is a crisis in China, a flood, a famine, or any crisis, when the picture comes, you see in the newspapers, almost everybody is hell and heart. You will not find any Chinese who is animic. In India, more than 70% people are animic. They don't have the strength to do anything physically great because they never care for the people. Our rulers, we cared only for the 10% population of the country, and we did everything in the language we did not know, we did not understand, which was not ours. That was English, and when we did everything in English. English takes care only of the 10% population of the country. We know our languages, whether it is Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu. It is these languages are not used in our parliament. Can you imagine? These languages are not used in our parliament, in our bureaucracy, in government job, nowhere. So we know our languages. China did everything in its own language. So China, Dr. Oya used to say, when you work in your language, you understand things better. you understand your capacity to deal with the world in tedious but we did our things everything we, our books our literature we ignored we don't know a bihari i'm from bihar a bihari doesn't know what is being written in malayalam a malayali in assam and assami doesn't know what is written in tamil nadu how will you have a national integration how will you become national uh Big, a great nation. If you ignore your own literature, if you ignore your own language, if you ignore your own people, and all the medium of our education, which is either medical science or engineering or anything, it is all done in English. And most of the students should read in quota in Rajasthan. Almost every year, more than a dozen students commit suicide. Why do they commit suicide? They come from different uh, areas of. India and they don't understand the lectures of their teachers because it is in English and they don't know English well and they commit suicide. Nobody has ever talked about it. Nobody never talks about it. Nobody, no editorial. I have never read any editorial why it happens. In all India, Institute of Medical Sciences in Delhi, almost every month or every six months, a student commits suicide. Only about a week ago, a female student commits suicide. And they don't write why they come to them. I try to find out. I talk to them. I've gone there. They come from different parts of India.
media, they don't understand the language, they don't understand the lectures, and they commit suicide. They are brilliant students in their own country, in their own state, in their own city. But when they come to Delhi, and they don't understand. So my point is, when we talk of China, China what did first of all, China Mao Zedong took care of the lowliest of the low, the poorest of the poor, and those lowliest of the low, they became strong, and in China they can handle things. Ninety percent people when China attacked India, people said Chini Chini are here, Chini are here, and people thought they are talking of sugar. In the Hindi language, China means sugar. They didn't know that they, a, China, a, China, a country called China also stands. This is the condition, at least in North India, at least in India states. Trust me, perhaps it is so all over India. So you cannot, we cannot do anything unless we take care of the poorest of the poor. The English language takes care of only the rich people, the so-called educated people, the so-called elitist people, the so-called upper caste people, and China. Did whatever they did, they did it for the poorest of the poor. Number one. Number two. As I said, China, they are, they are, they, are, they got their Hong Kong back. They got Tibet captured. So they are almost all. They, they care for their borders. And I tell, I tell you, if you read the latest news about the Chinese ambassador in Nepal, what they are doing, I'm surprised. A lady, Chinese ambassador. She is meeting all the leaders of Nepal. Nepal is Dr. Zia used to say Nepal is like a brother, our own blood. We are thick by blood, Nepal and Czech India. But Nepal is also not interested in India. Every day they speak against the rulers, Oli and company. They speak against India. Even today they say Ram was not born in India. He was born in Nepal. That is not so very important. But what I am saying, the tone and tenor of Nepal is changing because our government doesn't care for them. Our government doesn't care for our neighbors. Our neighbor, our uh, rulers, they used to go to Washington and Moscow and where else. But not, they never came. Our first prime minister never visited Nepal, never visited uh, Sikkim, never visited. I mean, you can see, first of all, he must. Neighbors. That should be first criteria in foreign policy, which we fail to do. So when we talk about China, we must know the basic things. Basic things are very important. China established a primary school in every village, or at least a, a cluster of five villages. They had a primary school. Then a cluster of 10, 20 villages. They had a middle school, and then they had a high school. So first of all, they care for basic education. Okay, we care. To be open the IIT, IIM. It's all right. IIT and IIM. I'm not against it. But try to analyze what kinds of students in IIT and IIT, IIM goes. No poor man can go there. It's very expensive, and very few poor students go there. Because number one, as I said, the medium of instruction in English it is not Malayalam, it is not Tamil, it is not Bengali, it is not Hindi. Number one, number two, it is too expensive for to get admitted admission in IIM. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. So my point is, China is ahead of us because they care for their people, the poor people, the poorest people. Another example I'll give you when. Uh, um, Kodala went to went to uh, Beijing. He expressed the desire to meet Mao Zedong. And the very next day, Mao Zedong himself came and knocked at the door of Bipi Kodala. Bipi Kodala had just finished his breakfast, so he was surprised who is at the gate. When he opened the door, he was surprised to see Mao Zedong himself at the door. And he said, Mr. Koyala, he wanted to meet me, I'm here. No Indian leader, no Nehru, nobody could do that. So what I'm saying, that the difference between a ruler and the ruled is very great in our country. That difference between ruler and the ruled is not there in China. I'm talking about the basic things, the difference, Dr. Loya always talk, the difference between the ruler and the ruled. 
देश से लोक भाषा लोक भूषा लोक भोजन लोक भवन And 
for partition. We partition India. And why did we partition India? Because somebody was in a hurry to become Prime Minister. Kids could not wait. Gandhi said, wait. No partition, please. Partition was a great disaster. 20 lakh people died. 10 lakh Hindus and 10 lakh Muslims in partition. And that hostility between the Muslims and Hindus is still is very much there, at least in northern India. Perhaps in southern India it is not so, in Kerala it is not so. But in Bihar, UP, there is a communal right every second month. Sometimes it is a big communal right, sometimes it is a small communal right. So when there is a, such a communal right, when there is such a... I don't trust a Muslim, a Muslim doesn't trust me. How can India prosper? After all, the population is Muslim, half Muslims are 18 crores in India. I have ignored them, just, uh, just as the Prime Minister Modi and its BJP, they are doing it. Do you know, in UP, the population of Muslims is about 17 points, and they did not give ticket to a single Muslim in UP when the last election was held. Is it a, is it a good sign? You cannot ignore the Muslims feel isolated. In China, it is not so. No group of people feels isolated. The state, the government, they takes care of the interests of everybody. When you go to a village, when you go to a school, everybody is put. In our country, it is not so. So, what I want to say, sir, that they must change the whole thing completely. And we have to go back to Gandhi again. Have to go back to uh, our the founding fathers of Indian Republic. We ignored America, we ignored Luria, we ignored Gandhi, and look where we are. A family is ruling the biggest party of India. Congress party is being ruled by one family, only one family, a very corrupt family, ignorant family, a family who doesn't know India, who has no love lost for India. She decides, that family decides, who will. I have respect for uh, the Congress party. I remember when Matulemeh died, his last article appeared in the Hindustan Times. Madhulima was a great social leader. And in his last article he said, Congress must survive. Because who is this party is crime. Congress must survive, otherwise the communal forces will take over India. And exactly this is what has happened. Because the Congress is dying, a slow death. The madam who is controlling the Congress party, she thinks only she and her son and a grandson and a daughter, they are capable to, to rule the country. This is no way to run a country. In China, you cannot think of that. Chen Ping is the president there. But nobody hears about his family, about his children, about his wife. Nobody hears. In, in India, when a prime minister died, he prepared the ground for his daughter to, to take over. When his daughter died, she prepared the ground for his son to take over. When he died, his widow took over. And now this, this, this dynastic democracy in India is a big problem. We must think of it, how to go about it. I know the task is big, the task is very difficult. But nothing is impossible if the people think about it. So, sir, my submission is that India has many problems to face and China has never which is shifting on our. I go, hello. 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 Are you listening, sir? Hello. Mr. Joshi. Madhalaji, you may continue. Oh, I thought nobody is listening. I am not. Okay, yes, listening. We are listening. We are listening. Okay, okay. Because uh, you continue. Uh, I am Vinod Bhaiya. You continue. I we are clearly uh, listening you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, as I, I, I like the case, we have to first of all we have to know the country, and knowing the country means knowing its problems, its past, its present, its future. Our future depends on our present and present has to take lessons from the scripture. We are ignoring all the three. So, and it's very unfortunate, it's very sad, the communal forces who are the 
responsible for the destruction of society, who are responsible for the partition of the country they are ruling. Uh, it is an irony, it is a misfortune, and we have to think, as socialists, we have to think about it, how to how we reverse the policies. There is no doubt that we are weak, we are not strong as socialists, there is no socialist party today, but there are hundreds of socialists, like uh, Joseph Jacobson, like uh, there are many, 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 I cannot name them, Anand Kumar, the, 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 any, we, we should often make meat and try to do something about it, only then I see some future of the country, otherwise the socialism is gone, the socialist party is gone, the socialist forces are gone, and mind you, my point is, we are not creating new socialism, I am 76 years old, from the closing must be more than 65, so 60 year old socialists, they will be dying in a few years. We are not having new, young, intelligent socialists. 20, 25, 30, 35 socialists are missing. And if they are they come, they are not properly trained. They are not properly educated. They are not reading the books by Dr. Loya, Mahatma Gandhi, Madhulime, and others, maybe Korean. They are not reading these books. And new books are not being written. Mind you, now in Pratasan and Hyderabad, we used to publish the literature of Dr. Lui. I used to buy, buy them. Then Masran Kapoor published eight volumes of Lohia's writing in Delhi. He also died. So when these people die, then Madhya Sathiti died, then Masran Kapoor died. New people are not coming. New people are not coming. My point is new, young boys and two girls are not coming. So my, my humble submission is that uh, people dedicate a socialist like uh, Joseph Jacob Saab and others, I know, so Kerala is a very organized society. I salute Kerala in every party. I heard that they are very organized. You may criticize them, but there is some decency, some honesty. Even Congress uh, uh, people, PV Korean, if I compare PV Korean with Bihar Chief Minister or UP Chief Minister, I can see the big difference in the way they talk, the way they behave. So, Kerala is also a mild postponement for the other people of other states in India. So, I would like to, come, before I conclude, I must submit because uh, when uh, Comrade Dosi yesterday asked me how much time will take, I, would, I said I about half now. So, before I conclude, I again uh, pay my tribute to Mr. Korean. I pay my thanks to Comrade Dosi. And I salute them for all this, all this program and I say goodbye to you. Thank you. Sir, I am Vinod Payala. Yes, I know you. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, I think you, you may please uh, elaborate some points yes. uh, regarding the uh, imperialist uh, uh, characteristic of uh, China, especially after Mao Zedong. And uh, uh, China is uh, continually exhibiting its imperialistic uh, tendencies to uh, bring other small nations under its cover uh, by stating the reason they have to protect their boundaries. And the South China Sea, uh, South China Sea, that is also a problem. And uh, China is uh, presently circumvering India by taking Pakistan into their hold and Bhutan they are trying at, at their best and uh, Sri Lanka Afghanistan only the country left presently left from the Chinese uh, hold but uh, the uh, Himalayan policy was there by Lohia if we could have uh, we, the, uh, India have had, had a uh, view or a policy on Himalayan such Lohia was Lohia was given. Uh, so, in the absence of such the policy, uh, we can see the Himalayan policy or uh, other thing. Uh, in absence of such policy, China can continually uh, encroaching our territory. So, you may speak uh, just few words. Regarding this also, personally, this situation is there in the our in our boundaries. Okay, thank you. Just a second, Madhuraj ji. Just a second. Uh, Vinod was asking about the expansionist 
government party of Thani uh, Yog, or many Hindi journals, Ajay, famous writer, they all used to call that part Russian. I remember it. Now nobody calls it Russian. So we have to change. He said, "What is shame? Such a big part of India it has no name." Uppusi, Uppuri, Uttari, Purvi, Sivaya. This is this shows how casual we are about our borders. Then we went to Nagaland. You remember? And Nagaland, I, you, and Jacob Josie could not go there. They you used to have a permit to go there. Doctor Lee said, "How can you have a permit to go to Nagaland? If a Kerala comes to Bihar, he doesn't take a permit." If a UP wala goes to Kerala, he doesn't take a permit. Why should any Indian go to Nagaland and take a permit? What is need of a permit? And he said, "I will come next year." He wanted to make a preparation for one year, and for one year he travelled all over India. I remember it. He went to Bihar, he went to Kerala, he went to Tamil Nadu, he went to Punjab, and every where he said, he gave a speech. How North East, uh, how Russia is being cut off from India. If we don't care, China will devour it. China will take it away. But the Indian government never cared for it. But he, he went there. I hope you remember it. Uh, at that time, Gora Parvara was the chief minister of Assam. He was the leader of Assam. Ajit Bhattacharjee was the Gyan Peeth Awardee. He was a great writer of Assam. They all were with Lohia. They travelled all over the North East. Sikkim. He went to Sikkim. He went to Um, Himachal, he went to North East, Arunachal Pradesh. So he was alone with them, and he said, "Let me, let Nehru arrest me if he wants, but I will visit my the part of different part of my country. But it is because uh, nobody can stop me." And he did it. So, Viraji, to answer your question, we have to have an. Oh, even now, I am I am surprised. Last week I read that one has to take permission to go to Meghalaya. I couldn't understand. I didn't know how can you have a permission to go to Bengal? No, anybody can take a railway ticket or flight ticket and go to Bengal. So that should be the case with Meghalaya and all all these places. We have ignored Northeast a lot, and if we continue to ignore, we will have we will pay the price. Nobody can help us. So I must tell you, let us revive that policy. We must," he said. Roya said, "If you have trees of different fruits from Nagaland to Himachal Pradesh, you can feed whole of Asia with fruits, just fruit trees all over, and give the land and the trees free to tax servicemen. We can do that. But does Modi listen to you and me? Does anybody in Manmohan Singh listen to him? No, Prime Minister." Tears for all this. The talk is without acting anything. I hope you got my answer, Mister. You know. Any other question, sir? Sir, yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Ah, Manoj uh, Ji, uh, thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 I'm Sachindra Babu. Okay. Uh, a co-worker of Joshi Jacob Vinod, Suresh Narikune, Pradeepan and so on, a beach on one name and so on. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh, you my, said, uh, 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 from the very beginning, I am a member of their company. Okay, also a government employee. Sir, my question is that, hello. Yes, Hi. continue. Sir, so, what is the difference between Lokya's Indo Park Bengal Confederation concept and uh, himalayan policy of dr ramanoh logya what is the difference between this both this okay. okay okay there the mic on over okay sir okay okay the india park federation you are right is one thing an himalayan policy mic like over here ma vega pata no no you may continue okay okay To answer your question, question, you are right. The mic is here. Okay, so India and Pak, when Bangladesh was also there, he wanted the partition to be under because 
YouTube say this is the basic sin, first sin of our leaders to partisan in India, and we will have to pay for it for 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 decades, if not centuries, because he knew if he were alive, he would have made a not a khandwar. BJP talks of a khandwar. There is, there is an element of aggression in a khandwar, but there is an element of policy in federation. Federation means India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, they will remain three countries, but the federation, and he said, this federation will work for some years. And when federation is formed, we will not spend so much money on defense. At the moment, India and Pakistan is spending billions of dollars. There is no need of spending that money. We can spend that billions and millions on our poor people, on our schools, on roads, on other developments. So he wanted to have a federation. And he said, for a federation, let be decided. When the president is from Pakistan, the prime minister will be from Hindustan. When the president is from Hindustan, the prime minister will be from Pakistan. And such kind of arrangements can be made. Pakistan should not think that we are capturing them. And India should not think that they are interfering. Indian internal affairs, they will be free. But foreign affairs, defense affairs, they will work together. So this was federation. Himalayan policy, we know what you said. That's a different thing. It's a different ball game, for, as they say. Because their the land, the Himachal, Arunachal, all those places, it has nothing to do with federation. He said Himalayan policy means all the states that consist of, that is part of Himalaya, that we have to decide. And as I, I, I said, number one, ex soldiers should be given land there. They should be encouraged and given money to build a house there. And these ex soldiers, they will work as your, as your, you know, ears and eyes. They will give information to the government of India what China is doing because they have experience in the army, retired army men. So, try to understand. You said the difference between federation and Himalayan policy. There are two aspects of the same national politics, national policy. He had a big mind, big outlook. He could see things from a bigger perspective. He was not a village leader. A lot of village leaders have become our prime ministers. I call Mr. Modi a village leader. And luckily for him and unluckily for us, he is our leader in Delhi. I'm sorry, there was some phone call. Did I, this, I'm sorry, sir. Are you listening to me? Hello? Yes, Hello? yes, yes. We are listening. Listen. Yeah, we are listening. We are listening. Okay. Listen, listen. All its economic aspects also, I understand. Ah, economic aspects. You, uh, economic aspects. In ah, Indo-Pak Indo 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 Confederation is an economical profitable to both countries. I understand, sir. Yes, okay, yes. Sir. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You are right. Ah. So, uh, hello. Hello. Hello, sir. I am Shashi Shagar from Kerala. My question yes. is, is it possible to break our diplomatic tie up with China? What slogan has said we have to break it? Is it possible now? Is it possible what? Can you repeat it? Is it possible to break our diplomatic tie-up with China? What Slohia told like that? We have to close our relations with China. No, no. I don't think that will help. Slohia never talked about it. Because if we break our relationship with uh, China, that will lead us nowhere. Neither it is neither here nor not there. Because what China has been doing, they will continue to do. I mean, there is no, I mean, you do it sometimes in a pick and out of anger, but that is only a very momentary step. That will not lead us anywhere. 
that will not help. The main thing is India has to be very particular and very, I mean, we, we have to be alert on every front, like China is, mind you. China is alert on economic front, political front, border front. Otherwise, how do you explain? Every second month they say Arunaj is a part of China. Arunachal is a part. So breaking relationship, diplomatic relationship will not help us. To answer your question, breaking diplomatic relationship will not help us. Except that except that we will not have our ambassador there, they will not have our ambassador here. Mind you, even if we have an ambassador there, Chinese government keeps an eye on the activities of our ambassador. Similarly, Chinese ambassador in India and Indian government is supposed to keep an eye on the activities of every ambassador of India. Okay. Whether Indian government does it or not, I don't know. I have no proof. But breaking of diplomatic relationship is of no use. I am not in favor of that. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Madhala ji, ji. Uh, I think uh, I, I, I am uh, thinking about uh, uh, this Hans nationalism in China. What? Hans nationalism, Hans uh, nationality, the Hans people. They are, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Hans. Their argument is everywhere in India. Yes, sir. Uh, the Hans community are uh, residing in uh, uh, considerable community in Singapore and other jo uh, joint nation also. Okay. Uh, I think uh, in, uh, in very future, sometimes, China may have a, another phase of Hans imperialism, Hans fascism, like uh, German fascism. Is the, uh, whether you can elaborate on that aspect, if uh, it is it true that if we suppose that China is going to be a uh, Hans uh, fascism, like uh, Aryan fascism in Germany, or any uh, we can, we, whether we can have a such reading uh, when considering the all aspects of Chinese imperialism, presently they are showing, uh, for example, uh, against the Muslims, that uh, uh, earlier Turkestan area, Ugias, they are also converting po population conversion also there in, the, in that area. Likewise in Tibet, there also uh, a population transfer is there. So, in such case, whether we can assume that China is uh, going to be a uh, Hans fascism in near future, that's my doubt and question. Uh, to answer your question, well, I don't agree with you. I mean, uh, you said Hans population, that is true. But uh, in China, I don't, uh, I identify Hans with China and China to Hans, let me tell you. So there, there, there is no point in uh, differentiating Hans and other people. They will demolish, they have demolished mosques, that is true, in Muslim areas. They will demolish Muslims. So long as, so long as they do not follow the communist policies of China, mind you. In my opinion, Hans is not important for them. Communism is more important than them, number one. And Chinese hegemony is more important. We in India think in terms of caste and religion and whatnot. Okay, like uh, when we talk of Yadav, Lalu Yadav, we talk of Yadav Raj. But this is not the case in China. China is a communist state and for them communism is more important than any religion or any caste or any clan. For them they are committed, committed within court. They are committed to their communism. And communism is an instrument to further their national interests. So I don't explain it in terms of hand or not hand. That is immaterial for me. Uh, Chin Pin, who is the president of India, he may be Han, but he's basically a communist, number one, and a communist, a Chinese communist. At the, uh, at the end of it, they are Chinese communists. So for them, communism is more important. And of course, about communism, mind you, communism is not no longer a monolithic proposition. Because I hope you remember. When Khrushchev came to China, Mao Zedong was alive at that time. Are you listening to me, sir? 
So on behalf of the Korean Memorial Committee, I extend my gratitude and thanks to dear Mother Lady. It was very much encouraging and informative. So it is the first step to be taken on behalf of this centenary celebration as part of this centenary celebration. I extend very warm thanks for all our colleagues who participated in the meeting. Once again, thank you to Mother Lady.